a Victory Day gift from Ukraine to Russia they struck with drones and missiles. A Ukrainian long-range drone struck the Gazprom Neftekim Salavat refinery in the Russian Republic of Bashkortostan on the morning of the 9th of May. The drone collided with a fluid catalytic cracking unit. It set a new record by traveling 1,500 kilometers. Gazprom Neftekim Salvat is one of the largest oil refining and petrochemical production companies in Russia. It specializes in the production of gasoline, diesel fuel and other types of petroleum products. The Baza Telegram channel reported that the drone hit a catalytic cracking unit, causing a small fire. Gazprom Neftekim Salvat carries out a full cycle of processing of hydrocarbons and produces gasoline, diesel, fuel, kerosene, other petroleum products, liquefied gases, butyl alcohols, plasticizers, polyethylene, polystyrene, ammonia and urea. Besides, drones attacked the Pervy Zavod oil refinery in Russia's Kaluga Oblast on the night of the 9th to the 10th of May. Several powerful explosions have been heard in the Zazinsky district in Kaluga Oblast. Local residents reported they heard the distinctive sounds of several UAVs flying overhead, after which a fire broke out in the area near the oil refinery. In addition, Moscow Mayor Sergei Sobyanin stated that a drone flying toward the Russian capital had been downed in Moscow Oblast. Three more drones were allegedly destroyed in Bryansk Oblast. Drones belonging to the security service of Ukraine have struck two oil transshipment depots in Russia's Krasnodar Krai. The source said the drones hit two oil depots in the village of Yurovka near the city of Anapa in Russia's Krasnodar Krai. These oil depots are transshipment points for the supply of fuel to Russian troops in occupied Crimea as they are located near the peninsula, the source said. Ukrainian special services officially refrain from commenting on drone attacks on Russian defense industry facilities and the Russian oil refining industry which supply its defense. An oil depot in occupied Luhansk was struck by ATA CMS missiles causing a mass fire at the facility, the Moscow installed head of the occupied region Leonid Pasechnik claimed. Fires in Russian-held territory have increased fourfold since Britain's delivery of Storm Shadow missiles as Ukraine continues to set the stage for its much-anticipated counter-offensive. Satellite data show more than 900 war-related fires have occurred in Russian-held territory in Ukraine in the last two weeks, likely caused by missile strikes. The fires have spanned the front line from the city of Kharkiv in the east of Kherson in the south at a frequency of more than four times as many as the two weeks before. According to an analysis by The Economist, the long-range weapons are capable of striking fortified positions. Ukraine received about 90 of the 110 Leopard 1A5 tanks promised to it. To date, Ukraine has been able to receive almost 90 tanks Leopard 1A5 from 110 tanks of this type promised to it in March 2023. The German press reports this with reference to informed sources. Tanks of this type are obsolete. They were previously in service with the ground forces of Germany and Denmark. Currently, 30 tanks out of 110 promised to Ukraine are in the arsenals in the Bundeswehr and are used for training tank crews. In total, Ukraine may receive even more than the promised 110 tanks as 20 more tanks are being prepared for delivery at the end of June. 25 Leopard 1A5 tanks are going to be delivered by the second half of the year. However, it is unlikely that the transfer of outdated modifications of German tanks will improve the situation for the Ukrainian army in terms of providing armored vehicles. Entering production in 1964, the Leopard 1 has long since been replaced by new generations of main battle tanks in Western militaries, although some remain in service. Many served in Bosnia, Kosovo, Afghanistan and the Kurdish-Turkish conflict. Proven in combat, the Leopard 1 was an effective Cold War-era main battle tank. However, many question its effectiveness and survivability in modern wars. The German defense companies Rheinmetall and FFG each bought 90 Leopard 1A tanks in the early 2000s from Denmark and kept them in storage for resale. However, their conditions varied and most remained in need of refurbishment. Many of these mothballed tanks are the Leopard 1A 5DK previously used in the Dutch Army and modified in an attempt to stay on par with modern threats. The 1A 5DK variants have several pre-existing upgrades that improve their fighting capabilities. 
These models have been upgraded with improved stabilization systems for their 105mm cannon, composite armor to help defend against anti-tank projectiles, improved detection and communications systems, a more powerful diesel engine and upgraded suspension.